Uh, someone wrote a comment on the Justinian deception and sort of laughed that I was in fear of travelling in my automobile. <laughs> and he's actually right. He's so right about it. And every time I hit the road, hit the public highways and travel in my automobile, which is almost daily to the shops, the normal runs, I live in fear. Because, and there's, there's no question about it. I mean, anyone that, um, that makes a sort of a stand against any form of corruption, especially the depth of the corruption that we live in in this society, it's biblical. It's, it's, it goes through the churches. Anyone that that doesn't live in fear of it would be crazy. And I admit it openly. Every time I get into the, my automobile or on that bike, that um, the motorbike. It's always in the back of my mind is when I'll be pulled over, have my property that I've worked hard for, and so much of it that's just been taken, impounded, and then debts clocked up, racketeering of our property clocked up against us and put into a state where, well, they assume that we owe them all this money. They create the debts just like that. David Walter did the same thing. He was a um, retired police officer, uh, and a good one at that. He was um, a very honourable man, and he served his career without any incidences, <laughs> as a lot of them do get involved in. But what he did was he devoted his time helping people. And what the government did to him is they charged him something like $300,000 fines for helping other people in the court. And they put that against his home. Now, David had all of his home paid for. He owed nothing on it. His rates were up to date. He didn't go against the government, and yet the government didn't like what he was doing. So they slugged him $300,000 charge and what his friends did up in the Tablelands which is very honourable for them to do this all of his neighbours got together and put in the $300,000 and bought his home off the government in order to let David live the rest of his life in his own home of course they owned it but they all agreed to buy it for him and leave David there, which is something that this government, through this fraud and racketeering, had done. They'd created a $300,000 debt against David because he made a stand against the corruption. He questioned the corruption. Uh, being a police officer, he was uh, diligent in finding what he did find, and he found some frightening things to the point where a couple of his cases, or one in particular, that I was there, the magistrate advised the prosecutor to stand down because of what was being exposed in the courtroom and then that would, if, it, if the prosecutor didn't stand down on that, then that would be a precedent, it would be forever, everyone would be having the right to, to look at it, to look it up. So the magistrate was very clever in, in um, closing it down or, or asking the prosecution to back down that it didn't have a case. So dealing with the corruption of this society is a frightening thing. Now the crazy thing is this society operates in Babylon and a lot of people don't know the difference between common law English, the language of common law English, and the, ba the Babylonian language of the Roman administration. 
And like we all believe that Babylon ended thousands of years ago. But Babylon never ended. It's been here all the time. It operates in a hidden in a hidden system. In plain sight. <laughs> it's hidden in plain sight. And these graveyards are probably the, the biggest place. So I'm going to show you soon. We're going to go we're going to go through the through the cities and we'll have a look at the language of Babylon, how it is absolutely everywhere. But you don't see it. But these graveyards has it everywhere. Every, everything on this tombstone signifies, signifies that this person died at birth, lived his whole life in some form of purgatory, in some form of death, until he finally reached the grave. And these signs here, this is not English, this is the language of Babylon. And these signs confirm that this man, John Gerard Boland, <laughs> that's not his name, his name is John Gerard, and he's of the Boland family. But this is to confirm that John Gerard of the Boland family lived his whole life in a form of purgatory, in a form of death, until his body finally expired. And then they let him rest in peace. And this language here on the tombstone is the language that he assumed he could read. It's the language that you, probably most of you, assume you can read. And it's the language that is through all the cities of the Western world. And what it is, it's Babylon speaking to the Babylonians. It's Babylon speaking to the dead. And when you can read this dead letter text, then you can be assumed by Babylon that you are dead. You are one of them. You died with them. Now, something is going on with John Gerard Boland in a technical or in a legal form. And it's very clever. There are two trusts here. Well, there's three actually. But John and Gerard were birth. These two officers, this is not a name, and no name can be written in all uppercase text as a sign. And even in sign, we have the J and the G and the B, which are of a larger font size to the rest of the words, which breaks the jurisdiction of, that will read OHN, that will read Erard, and that will read Oland in a grammatical sense, using the grammatical rules of um, English and the grammatical rules of sign and the grammatical rules of Latin. So this tombstone has been created as an absolute total fiction. So this person almost never existed. But on the birth certificates, two things have been created. John Gerard, that was birthed on the date of registration, and Boland was birthed on the date that John was born. On the date that John Gerard was born, he took the Boland name and they put that, well that was the account in all uppercase, they tied that to his foot or his toe, his ankle. And then on the registration date or a few few days after, his mother created the, the John Gerard, his name. And then probably a month or two after that, in this case, uh, this John Gerard was then registered. So there's two registration points here. The date that Boland was registered was the day that he was born in the, in the uh, hospital. That was the first creation of Boland because John Gerard did not exist on that date. And then at some time later on the registration date, John Gerard was created. And what they did was they created two trusts, John Gerard and Boland. And the minute John Gerard of the Boland family assumed his name was John Gerard Boland that became the incorporation of two entities John Gerard on the registration date 
and Boland on the born date. And then the minute John Gerard Boland, or John Gerard assumed he was John Gerard Boland, he then took the born date as his birth date and celebrated his birthday, this birth of the Boland Trust, on the date he was born. What he should have done is celebrated this date of John Gerard, whose true real name broke his name, broke away from the Boland, but he should have celebrated his John Gerard name on that birthday, which was the date of birth of John Gerard, was the date of registration, which is probably a month or two after he was born. So this tombstone signifies or signifies the death of this incorporation, John Gerard Boland. And it's always put in stone as a statute, as a statue, because the stone is an image, the imagery, the engraved or the graven images. Here they are on stone, set in stone. And I guess you could say that this man never found his way back to the Garden of Eden. He never found his way back to his real name, his only name, his true name was John Gerard. And he went to the grave as John Gerard Boland under this date of birth, which was the born date, leaving John Gerard with the state. And no presumption of death while well, he's presumed dead, but what happens to the estate of John Gerard, who is the owner of all the lands, the birthright ownership of the lands, goes to the government. And if the government is not the real government of Australia, but a foreign administrator registered to the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, Washington DC, then that would mean that the mineral and energy wealth of John Gerard, the true granted dominion that was granted in 126 of Genesis of the Bible, that estate that belonged to John Gerard went to the state. So for every one of these graves here that happens, the birthrights of these estates have gone back to the one who administers the incorporations and all incorporations which are fictions and false which are the lies, which is Babylon, goes back to the owners of Babylon. And the owners of Babylon is the Vatican. And that's how the Vatican takes the harlot of Babylon. That's how it takes the dominion of the world, of the people of the world and that it leaves all the people of the world dead, slaves, with no rights, only with the terms and conditions or the privileges of the statutes, the words written in stone, the statues. Michael Brown. Michael is his true name. Brown is his surname or family name. But what Michael did He's ashamed himself to be Michael Brown. We'll go and have a little look at all the signs through the cities of Babylon to show you that not one of these signs are written in English or make any form of sense. And even most signs, because they're put on a square or have a, bordered, um, a border around them, a sealed border, then contains the signs, the language of the of Babylon, contains it within the sign, so it doesn't escape onto the onto the public that belongs to you and I, the real, that belongs to John Gerard. And the reason why these signs have got to have these are on squares or on a sign or on a plate or on a plane, separate to the land, is to save their ass to, or to save them from possible. It's, it's, it's to save them from being sued 
from the real people. It's to keep them separated. They, Babylon must be separate. It floats over the top of the layers of the earth. It's, it's the law of water. And that's why they call United States and all of its jurisdiction flooded lands because Babylon operates on water. So what it is, is these are really all ships in dry dock because these water corporations that operate on water are sitting on land. So they must float above it. And it floats above that in a form of a fiction where they make everything so it doesn't exist. Nothing exists. The only thing that actually exists on this stone here, the only thing that makes any sense is this, where R dot full stop, I full stop P, which really means rest in peace. But in the grammatical standing of this, if it had to follow the rules of Latin, to make John and Gerard and Boland come together as one, you would have to hyphen it, hyphenate it. So this is actually speaking John and Gerard and Boland as three separate offices, three separate trusts. But we, the ignorant, <laughs> the ignorant masses, the illiterate, will read that as John Gerard Boland, which is the great mistake. And we have then fallen into the world of Babylon. <laughs> so let's go and have a look and just see all the signs of Babylon. So I'll go and see all the signs of Babylon. We'll take a ride on the Trusty machine, and we'll play it safe. Go through the city where no one can harass us because this is not registered to any other foreign entity. It was bought with their um, with their money, but it was bought, I guess, uh, outside the system. There's no record of it. But what I do do on these um, on any equipment that I do buy, that I have to pay their uh, military script for is I take a the, the serial number of everything and I file it with the court and with the registrar general so that the registrar general is aware that the items I guess that I hold are with him or that I've um, are recognized by the registrar general and that if anything happens that uh, there is evidence that it is it's been identified so to speak so let's go have a look the first the first sign we're going to have a look at is this one here we have what it's assumed to be Cairns City Council That really reads, if you can read this sign language, it reads cans and city and council. Because when you're using debased Latin, which has really been created or perfected by Walt Disney and the Sarah Witte documents, which was uh, a document that related to illustrative text and creating fictions. And the reason why Walt Disney had to create a fiction in cartoons was to create a system of absolute fraud, or not, not fraud, but absolute fric uh, fiction, so that anything or everything that was happening on cartoons had no jurisdiction with any form of fact. So a cartoon, and you see this on newspapers, a lot of it, they are boxed, which is a boxing rule in here, it's a boxing rule. Uh, this one's got to be boxed because you actually have some English written on it, some proper English, but it's joined with the all uppercase Babylonian text uh, by order, chief executive officer is what it's assumed to be read. But that's actually Donald Duck writing <laughs> or um, Walt Disney writing because Walt Disney created the cartoon or the satire, which was the jurisdiction of a joke, the jurisdiction of fiction in order that no part of that fiction 
can be entered into any form of a fact and therefore all cartoons whatever happens within the the realm of a cartoon the realm of the fiction can never come back at them as a fact or be, be, be sued for anything that is said as a as a joke now what's happening here is these signs are being used operating under the Sarah Witty grammatical rules of satire and uh, illustrative text in order that all of this becomes a joke all of this becomes a fact that you have entered into this cartoon text this debased Latin you've assumed it to be real but the minute you you find out that it's not real and you step out you've got nothing to sue them you can't sue them because you entered into them into this um, the realm of satire the realm of fiction the realm of cartoon the realm of the city of the uh, Sarah Witty document and the realm of Walt Disney that's probably why he had a lot to do with the setting up of the pictorials of the Federal Reserve Bank the pic pictorials are the, the the debt notes the the bills the bills of exchange I've all been done in in a way that it's so it's a it, it, it resembles a fiction a cartoon and even though they look official these signs look official they operate under the Walt Disney cartoon text system now this one is very interesting too not only it, it is sealed it's it's a sign but we have the Cairns City Council written up the top here which is Cairns and City and Council we have Cairns and Cemetery but because it's been all uh, italic the, the word italic means with text is removed or from another document or removed from the page it's also underlined also means italic so this sign is actually saying absolutely nothing and all the part that is written in proper English that can be read is italic which means off the page <laughs> and then to top it off down here it's got by and order and chief and executive and officer which reads absolutely nothing but the thing's been made a fiction because of the language of Babylon the Babylonian text that's been used to create that fictitious sign so that's just the first sign and now we'll go and have a look at some of the uh, the road signs and have a look at all those just to show you what's been happening with this Babylonian text the Babylonian Babylon speaking to the Babylonians and are you the Babylonians <laughs> well let's go and find out it's I'm not saying that we should disobey the road signs uh, Babylon is like any other society it's um, it operates it, it it operates under a safe system as well it's, it's got to keep the people in it safe especially Babylon because it's administering uh, the people so it does have to make itself look like it's doing the right thing and be, being safe so we're not criticizing the rules of Babylon at this point but what we are saying that all of the rules of Babylon are written in such a way that they only speak to the Babylonians and they do not speak to the common man the common law English any common law English is void from these signs <laughs>
the language of sign, the language of sin, the language of Babylon. And all signs, street names, everything. It's as if Babylon has taken over everything. And it's been administered by the Masons, the Freemasons, Masonry. That administer the symbols and the signs. Freemasonry is a, an international organisation which is not national. So therefore, it derives from the sea, international corporations, international entities have no lands. They can't have any lands. And it's a bit like the, the margin of a document the same. The margins of a document is the administrative part of the document. That's why the written language in the margin of documents is never written in English or is always italic or of a different font size. It's to grammatically say this is the margin, this is the marginal text and it is no part of the document. But if you're not grammatically aware of that then if they usurp the marginal text into the actual main body of the document They usurp the, the marginal text into the main part of the document, into the main body of the document, and you can't tell the difference between the marginal text and the text within the document. Then you may you'll make the error of reading the marginal text as a part of the document. And if you make that mistake, then you will misread the document, what it's saying. You may assume that it's saying something that it's not. And the maximum, the maximum of presumption is that a, a presumption, is a, is a, a fact negates a presumption. Which means if you don't know the fact and you're operating under the presumption, well that will exist as the law until the fact appears. The thing is, with a fact is that if it's your own stupidity and your own ignorance that you assume something then you have no one else to blame. It's a bit like the cartoon Walt Disney created. If you assume the cartoon to be real, then more fool, more fool you. But if those pictorials in cartoon form, if the same rules are used in creating a pictorial power bill or council rates bill, but it's been used under the grammatical rules of been used under the grammatical rules of satire and fiction. Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. Then if you believe that bill to exist, then more fool you. The thing is, when you realise it doesn't exist. And the agency that's trying to issue you the bill believes that it does exist. Then the ignorant idiot is the agency that's trying to enforce the bill. And this is where bloody jets. And this is where. 
I become so frightened. English. It's a foreign sign. It's a military. 
a military jurisdiction. That's why everyone's Mr. Mrs. Miss. These are military accounts. Got nothing to do with, with the people or with the English system or with the common law system, which is the Christian system. And every trust has two sides. The side of the debtor and the side of the creditor. So you have to make up your choice what side you want to be on. And that's why when the police pull you over and they ask, what's your name and date of birth? They want to know, are you John Henry or are you Doe? And when you say John Henry Doe, they need to know the date of birth of John Henry or the date of birth of Doe because they're two different dates of birth. And they need to find one of those dates, the date of the Doe, the birth of the Doe. The minute you do that, then you have consented to be in Babylon, to be subject to the Babylonian language, the satanic language of the dead or the purgatory, where you are birthed, where you were born living, birthed into purgatory, birthed, birthed into death, birthed into an assumed death. And then when you finally reach the tombstone, I put the two trusts on the, on the stone, John Henry and the Doe for the closure of that of that account of that debtor and that creditor account all Babylonian all satanic where I made one of my first videos. <laughs> I think this tombstone will be here for a lot longer than all of us. Because our death has been recorded in, in stone, the head, the headstone. Babylon, the language of Babylon. The language through all the cities, You've been converted from a, a creditor to a debtor. You didn't know it. You didn't know the difference between the language of the debtor, the language of the creditor, which is really the language of the, the main body of the text on a page, the language of what's in the margin, which is the administrators. And if you can read the language of the administrator, then you've consented to it because it can't be read. It's Donald Duck. It's Mickey Mouse. It's Walt Disney. It's been constructed on the... It's been constructed on the... Styles manuals of Sarah Whitty. The style manual of the illustrative text. The text that is the symbol of symbolic text. The text of pictures. The text of symbols but not the text of true descriptive writing, the text of the descriptions. It's not that. So when you read it and assume it to be English, then mix it with the English language. Well, you've only got yourself, as I said, you've only got yourself to blame. It's ignorance that does it because Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck is fiction. The power bills, the council rates notices, they're pictorials. That's not writing. A pictorial is, is an illustration. It's a graven image. <laughs> it's engraving. The text is a symbolic text. It's not writing. The whole thing is a fraud but while you assume it to be real and before the presumption has been proven then the presumption will remain as the fact but once it's 
been proven wrong, then the fact overrides the presumption. It negates the presumption. And then you're left with nothing. Nothing but a foolish idiot that you've been for believing that those documents were real.